Good morning, evening, or afternoon, whatever it is for you. I'm Cycle, and this is Let's Play Train Simulator. We are staying on the London to Brighton route today. I saw a couple of those last time. And we're going to scroll all the way down here past these other scenarios and some check marks. We're going to be doing South Down Splitter today. There's more down here too. But uh, we are going to be doing South Down Splitter on this particular scenario. 40 minute scenario. We're going to three bridges from London, Victoria. So, about, I like to consider Gatwick. Airport as about the halfway point. Three Bridges is right after Gatwick Airport. So we're going to be doing a stop at Red Hill, which means I know we're using the Red Hill line. We're not going to use the Quarry line. So that's the route we can expect to take today. Let's get into the scenario and let's take a look and see what we need to do. Hello driver, today you'll be driving from London, Victoria to Three Bridges. I know that. This train divides at Red Hill where you will detach the rear four cars before picking up passengers. What if there are passengers on the cars? Do you want them to stay there? They'll figure it out. It is raining in the station again. I've already opened the doors, thank you. So let's go ahead and bring the uh, HUD up. You can see it is uh, 4.48 in the afternoon. And I believe our signal ahead is red. Yeah, our signal ahead is red. <laughs> I don't know why it's raining in the station. That makes no logical sense. Ready to depart, thank you very much. So since we have a red, we're not going to really be able to do much. Let's just do the AWS self-test. There it goes. The Q key has been fussy for that lately for some reason. So I'm going to go very, very slowly, but because... That's the bell. Because the uh, signal has not changed yet, I'm going to have to wait for clearance to proceed. I am going to move up to the signal slowly and hope that it clears on its own before I need to actually go anywhere. As you can see, I need to be at a Clapham Junction at 4.55, so it should be clearing shortly. I hope it clears shortly. I hear a train coming in right now. That must be the train that we are waiting for. Actually, we're waiting for that train to leave. That's what we're waiting for. So I'm going to get a little closer to the signal so as soon as we're allowed to go, we can go. A little more. Ah, that's what we're waiting for, that train. Because it was literally on a path to run into us if we moved forward. So we had to wait for that train. Oh my. I literally saw him coming at me and I thought, don't you dare. <laughs> don't you dare run into me. But no, it's being veered over to uh, the other platform. Platform 17, I believe that is over there. So we should get our yellow shortly, or even a green to get out of here. Again, not realistically raining in the station, but it is. And we are clear for line G, so we can proceed now at a speed limit of 20 miles per hour. That is the limit for many of the lines leaving London, Victoria. There may be some that are at 15 or at 10, but I don't think I've been in any of those lines yet. And as you can see, a very, very dark, stormy afternoon. And that train's arrival time has uh, complicated my uh, stops, so I'm not going to have as much time as I hope to for this uh, journey over to uh, Clapham Junction. We're going to have to be on our mark for our timing today. Now because I know the last scenario had some issues with timings, I'm just going to hope that we don't have to deal with any issues like that this time. So uh, here's hoping that we don't have any problems with our arrival times this time. We are coming into a 40 mile per hour limit. There are Victoria carriage sightings, as I mentioned in other scenarios, are to our left. And also to our right. There are two that are ending to our right. They may have already ended, in fact. We can now move on to a 40 mile per hour speed limit. And you can 
can see the multitude of signals ahead here. It's too bad that they don't offer any more simplified hub where you get your information on your destination and things like that, but you can still go ahead and uh, hide all the uh, HUD information, like the signals and that, to give you a more accurate view of the route and the cab itself for your controls. So it's too bad there's not a more simplified HUD to that aspect. That would be neat to have the information on the left, the speed limit and that, a little more to the left of the screen, and then uh, remove everything else and free up the center of the screen. That would be a much more simplified HUD, and I would try that because I would encourage you to watch the signals. Plus, I use the keyboard shortcuts, so it means I would have to keep an eye on my controls using the keyboard shortcuts and know by watching the speed what my problem is. I wouldn't know what the downhill gradient is, uh, and that information would go away, but it would still be a much more simplified HUD that you can use to learn the route without knowing what the actual gradients are. So that would be an interesting uh, change to the HUD. I don't think that's something that is going to get added at this point, obviously, but it would be neat. It means you'll have to watch, have to watch for the speed limit signs and such too in that kind of a HUD because you're not going to see those until you see a mark, until you see a pop, uh, sign on the side of the track, and then you have to literally slow down in time for the uh, limit change. I'm not saying I would use that, but it would be interesting to see. So we are on the 1 in 84 gradient coming out of the Clapham Junction area. And I think I'm going to have to hit, nope, we have just leveled out. We're still imperceptibly gaining speed, but we should lose now. That was perfect. Excellent. I still don't understand why we just go straight to zero on that. Probably because the bridge is designed that way. We can now go up to 60, but theoretically we're not going to get up to 60 anyway, realistically, because we're going to have to slow down for Clapham Junction anyway. So let's just get ready to slow down at Clapham Junction. In fact, we're doing it a little bit... We're a little bit slow on the brake here, so let's go ahead and put a level two brake on to, ease, to help us with that right now. And I'll take it back to level one so I can ease into the station at 30 miles per hour, which is the speed I like to enter the stations at. Something I've just started appreciating over time is being able to get in the station at a decent speed and being able to brake within the station. So I'll put a level two brake application on now. I'm going to try to avoid doing anything more than level 2 application because I do have the uh, rain and that is going to uh, falsify our conditions a little bit here. Not really the word I'm going for, but it works. So arrival at Clapham Junction Platform 13. Taking a quick look at the train at, from outside. This is the back of the train. And as you can see, there's still enough daylight outside that you can actually recognize everything. So you can see some buildings over there. So still, still a nice uh, setup for the route right now. Even with the rainy conditions, you can still see a lot. You can see the lights in the station. So I like the uh, design of this right now. This looks very nice. And uh, I know I've been saying that a lot about this route, but I do like all the buildings and diversity of everything on this route. Not everything is uh, accurate. Some of the roads cross the highway are just the individual road and nothing connecting to it. But uh, the things you see as you drive along are very, very nice. I have no complaints about this route for an older route, it is uh, functionally fantastic. I'd love to see an updated version of the route, however. Uh, at the same time, um, I'm a little concerned it might be more costly to run the route on the updated version. Because the uh, until the uh, a new core is built into the game, there's no point to have a new version of this route. This one is fine as it is with the exception of the uh, scenario point scoring errors. Leaving Clapham Junction, platform 13. Our speed limit is now, is again, 60 miles per hour as it was coming in. We just haven't gotten to that yet. And our next stop is going to be at East Croydon. So we are going to pass by a few, sta pardon me, a few stations along the way here. The next station we're going to pass is Wadsworth Common.
there is a 70 speed limit coming up. So we are on a uh, track that's going to take us uh, through the best speed limits on this line. So this is uh, not too bad at all from a driving perspective today. You may remember on previous zeros we had to drop to 45 or 40 or even 30, 20 coming into some stations. We're on the direct track today just going through everything because we're, we're an express train. Well, not quite an express train. There are a few stops, but there are not too many. So semi-express. Though I still don't understand why the football special, uh, the soccer train, why that one was on a track that slowed it down all the way, even behind a bunch of double yellows. I still don't understand why it was set up that way since that was an express train. But what do I know? So right now I'm holding at 59.2, which is actually quite impressive. My speed has not changed. This is uh, Wandsworth Common Station. We are starting to lose speed now, but we are coming into the 70s, so we can start speeding up. Which I will do now, and I don't know why I didn't start yet. This is Balham Station. As we exit Balham, we're going to cross Bedford Hill. We are at this time about five and three quarter miles from East Croydon. The Balham Junction just went off to our left to the South London Network. That's the Crystal Valley Line. Or Crystal Palace Line, sorry, the Crystal Palace Line via Stratham Hill. And I just crossed 70, so we're going to go ahead and take the throttle off for a moment to stay within the speed limit. Again, this is not a career scenario, so I won't lose any points or anything for speeding or wheel slip or anything, but we want to keep everything legit. And you know I'm going to speed at some point by accident. It's bound to happen. So I believe we're just coming upon the junctions for Stratham right now, the Stratham junctions. The Sutton and Mole Valley lines. That was probably the overbridge preceding the junctions. That might have been Mitcham Lane we might have crossed. I'm not 100% sure as I have not been watching all the roads. But this might be the junction right here. And there indeed is straight and common station. So I was right, that was Mitch and Lane back there. Our, that's a repeater signal. Once again, if you're not familiar with the repeater signals and it's your first time here, it was pointing at a diagonal, which means that we have a proceed aspect, green or yellow. If it is horizontal, that means you have a red aspect and you have to stop. Repeater signals are used when you have a hard time seeing the signal ahead. Now, sometimes there are some signals that are hard to see that do not have repeater signals. I don't understand why. I saw one of those along this path, uh, London to Brighton, as we were going past somewhere past uh, on our on our football special. When I had to figure out if those are red or a yellow ahead, uh, there was a curve, and we didn't have a repeater before that curve to tell me if it was a red signal. So, not sure why that one doesn't have a repeater. Probably should have. So we were gaining speed a little bit there, so I just cut the throttle back to make sure we didn't do that. Since I am going right at the speed limit, and we're having a little bump there, since we're going at the speed limit, we should not have too much difficulty with um, our stop times. I might have missed Norbury Station as we passed it. If not, Norbury is our next station. I'll try to get a look at the sign as we pass so I don't have to bring up the mini-map. 
because I'm not 100% sure, sure which station we just passed as I'm doing this, I'm just not going to call out the road name yet. Nope, that's Thornton Heath. That is Thornton Heath. So we did miss Norbury. As you see, a road is crossing above us as we leave the station. At least I think that was a road. Might have been a building. There's a road right after the station. We have to start slowing down for East Croydon. So instead of trying to give you information, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, concentrate on my driving. That might be a good idea. I actually slowed down a little too much there. Selhurst is our next station. I know that last overbridge, I believe, was Whitehurst Road. Or Whitehorse Road. That comes to my mind because in Canada we have a place called Whitehorse. Way up in the Yukon. Which means it's a cold, cold place. Okay, I did not think we'd be having a junction at 60 miles per hour. That is shocking. I'm surprised that is not a slower speed. I felt like we were going to derail on that junction. In reality, that probably should have a 40 on it. I am just letting the speed go down gradually to 45. I seem to be having a little bit of lag here. It looks like they're a, a little bit busy on the routes, causing a little bit of lag today. Hopefully it doesn't affect my drive. We are gaining speed, so I am going to brake to make sure we don't break the speed limit. Plus, we have to slow down for East Croydon anyway. We need to get down to 25 before we actually get to the station. So let's uh, make sure we do that. Putting on a level two brake application for a moment to make sure we don't come in too fast. It means I can't go through the station at 30 like I like to. So I'm gonna have to accept that and uh, just take 25. It's still a decent speed for going through the station. Now, because I lost too much speed back there, I might have, depending on how the stops are programmed here, I may have a difficult time with this stop. We'll find out as we make it. I think I'm going to lose too much. I think I've lost too much time, so this is not a good setup for me. That means I'm probably going to fail this. Yeah, this is most definitely a failed stop at this point. Just in case I can still make it, I'm going to go ahead and come to a complete stop, even without all the trains here, or cars in here, but I have a feeling this is going to be a failed stop. That was a successful stop. I was not expecting that. Well, we're going to carry on. I did not expect that to be a successful stop, so I am very pleased with that. So we are, lead now that you got my moment of surprise there, we are going to Colston South, uh, which, um, which, is, which is actually right near the Colston Town Station. Those two stations are close to each other, as you may know, if you're in the UK area. But, uh, we saw Colson South in the last scenario. <laughs> or Colson Town in the last scenario, sorry. 45 is our limit. I'm going to make sure we ride the speed limit because I want to try to get to our destination on time. As you see, we're barely going to make it on time by the current ETA. And we have to make our subway up to 60 miles per hour. So it's a good thing I stopped where we did because if we carried on any further, we might have been late on that stop. So... I took too much time off on our uh, drive there, and that cost, that almost cost us the scenario, but we are, I am fortunate, and we are going to carry on on this journey, and you are going to get to see this one as it is. So we're going to get up to 60, and we have a 90 coming up, so our uh, speed is going to be very, very good coming up here. We're coming up on Colston South, or no, not, uh... East South Croydon is what I meant to say. So we're coming up on uh, South Croydon, not close to South. That's still four minutes away. I'm at 60 now, so I'm going to cut off the throttle for a moment. This should be uh, 
South, uh, pardon me. I'm suddenly remembering, forgetting, South Croydon. That was South Croydon. Which means the South Croydon Junction is coming up here. We should be passing next to Pearly Oaks. And by the way, we're going to go ahead and, and try to get up to 90 as quick as we can here. Because that should help us with our arrival time, especially because it's one second after the planned time. Typically, we have a full minute to make the stop, so that might be why it was so successful. But I'm still a little antsy because of the previous scenario we were marked late if we were at even one second late. The last scenario was very, very antsy on that. So I'm a little jumpy on the times for this scenario. We're going to see what happens as this one goes on. drop into a 70 coming up and as you see we have a flashing uh, double yellow I believe coming up so we're actually going to have a diverging route coming up as well it looks like we can take that junction at 70 which does not make sense I just have a feeling we're going to derail on that junction at 70 but I'm going to slow down for that this should be per I think this is pearly that we're now in There's our single flashing yellow. There is the 70 up ahead, so we are under the 70 now. And Colson South is actually straight ahead. So I'm a little bit under 70 because I just don't feel confident going in this uh, junction at 70. Thank you. So we're getting a feather junction to the left it looks like and I'm going down to 60 just to be safe in fact 90 yeah 70 is our speed never mind we were able to go at 70 but as you see it seemed a little jumpy I did not feel confident doing that at 70 I did not feel confident with it at all so now our speed is up to 80 we did not see a sign for the 80 we just are expected to know that if you don't have the HUD And I'm going to start to break now because uh, Colson South is half a mile away and we are going pretty fast. We're not losing speed at the pace that I would like. I'm going to put on a level 2 brake application for a moment. I'm going to take it back off so and let our speed reduce on the level 1 application. We should be okay for the time being. Our limit is going down to 75. I thought that's a 25 and I almost panicked for a second, but it is a 75. So I can still come in at 30 on this one. And I'm gonna do that now and I'm gonna start coming to a stop as I get fully into the platform here. So I'm gonna continue so I'm fully in the platform this time because I think I have the time this time. And I'm going to go ahead and put the brakes on at this point. Arrival at Colston South Platform 2. Leaving Colston South, we are going 75 miles per hour. And it is about three and a half miles, a little over three and a half miles to our next stop at Merstham. Now, I did continue on this journey for a little ways. I even got to uncoupling the train. But I found out that when I got to a stop way further up the line near the end of the route, for some reason I had another one of those rogue station stop uh, failures. I don't know why that was the case, but I had a rogue station stop uh, near the end of the route. So I'm going to explain that as we get up there. I'm going to have to rerun this entire section because I did not have a save after Colston South. So I'm going to probably plant down another save somewhere along the way to make sure we don't have any more problems or we can rerun it very quickly if we need to. 
Uh, so for right now, we have a London Bridge train going up along past us here. I think many of the trains along here are London Bridge trains. So the Red Hill Line and the Quarry Line should have split by now, I believe. If we look at the mini-map, uh, we're going to look back here. You're going to see, indeed, we are on the Red Hill Line. So the Red Hill Line is going to cross under Wood Place Line. Or Wood Place Lane, sorry. That's a actual road. And then the railway lines are going to cross after that. That's probably where the lines cross right there. We're going to go into the Merstham Tunnel right after this. So the Merstham Tunnel is uh, going to lead us into Merstham, naturally. A couple over bridges here. So this tunnel actually uh, goes under the M23 highway. gone ahead and eased off the throttle. I'm going to give you an overhead view of the M25 highway, which we're going to uh, cross under in a moment, or over it might be, might be crossing over it in a moment. And you're going to see that highway as we uh, come into Merson. So I'll apply the brakes right now so we can start slowing down. So this is not the highway. The next uh, passage is the highway. I did not mean to break again yet. So I'll take that off. So that should be the highway up there that you see right now, I believe. In fact, it's not on our map yet, but I'll show you when we get up there. I'm going to continue to break in the meantime. So this is the highway right here. Well, no, that's another road. The highway is right after it. So we go over the highway. That's the highway down there. And as you see, we're entering Mersum Station from above. Let's get a look from inside the train as I hit the alerter. I need to address the passengers. Attention all passengers. This train will be losing the last four cars at Red Hill Station. Make sure you have vacated those cars by that time. Thank you. Okay, that's out of the way. Let's take a look at Merston Station. Which, uh, as with a lot of stations, is just a single building. That is Merston Station. Yes, I know we have to divide the train. Thank you very much. So, uh, leaving Red Hill. Or no, leaving uh, Merstham. I always do that. Leaving Merstham, we're making our way to Red Hill, and that is where we're going to lose half of our train. So we are going at a 70 mile per hour speed limit, and we have just hit that speed limit. I believe it was 90 coming out of the station, or it might have been 80, one of those. You can see Red Hill dead ahead. We're going to have to lower our speed to 30 for this uh, junction coming up. I've already eased off the throttle a little bit, a little bit even though, you know you notice that there's no time indicated below the Red Hill P3. We have to get there, but we're going to have to disconnect the cars there. There's no timing on that car disconnection only on the stop that follows it. 
So once we disconnect the cars, we're going to be able to uh, open the doors at that point. We can't do them in the other order. That's not the order we want to do them in. Because it will give us a failure on disconnecting the cars, I believe. We were specifically told to disconnect the cars before opening the doors. You can see Earl's Wood is on our heads, so you can naturally assume that we're going to be stopping at Earl's Wood today as well. I'm coming a little slower than I would have liked on this. I should have actually kept the throttle up for a little while. So I'm going to try to get a little speed back before I actually hit the brakes. And now I'm going to hit the brakes. Bad time. Get away. I did not come in slowly enough for that uh, transition, unfortunately, so I'm going to be marked to speeding twice, I believe. I got down to 20 in time, but I did not get down to 30 in time. So I am going to be marked with one speeding infraction there, even though I was slowing down. I am going to get dinged for that, unfortunately. So we are at a 20 mile per hour speed limit now, which is why I was screeching to a halt. Okay, we are coming to a stop now. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the cars as soon as we stop. And the doors are open. So as we go to the coupling view, you're going to see that we do leave those cars behind as we leave the station here. They just disappeared off of our thing because we can no longer couple. So uh, we are leaving into a buffer here. You can see the buffer straight ahead. So we have a limit of 20 on this uh, line just to make sure we don't accidentally cross into a buffer. So we can stop quickly if we need to. But we're going to veer onto the line and we are going to proceed momentarily at a 75 mile per hour speed limit. So we shouldn't take too long to get onto the main line here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and punch the speed up to 70 so we can get to Earl's Wood in fast fashion here. There it is, I had to cut the speed off for a second, but we are good to proceed now and we are going to do so. We're not gonna get up to 70 because we're only about six tenths of a mile away from Earl's Wood. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, come to a stop up here. But we're gonna have to slow down when we get to about 50 or so. Yep, gonna start applying the brakes now, but I don't need to slow down completely yet. I'm just I'm just gonna manage the speed at this point. I'm just seeing a little barn up. Well, that's not the side I want to show you. There's looks like a barn off to the side there on the left. So we are losing speed nicely at this point. This is a good slowdown for us. Gonna ease off the brakes for a second. And now we'll go ahead and reapply them. We are a smaller train now, so we don't have to worry too much about our stop location at this point. We should be looking for a four car stop, and if we don't find it, we don't find it. this is a good enough spot. Arrival at Earlswood. You saw I just brought up the uh, Departure time for a second to see what the departure time was. So I, this is the required departure time for the station. I wanted to check that. In any case, we are leaving uh, Earlswood Platform 2 at a 75 per hour, 75 mile per hour speed limit. I have made a couple attempts at the route after this point so far, but I have so far been finding that it has been impossible to do. And I'm trying to figure out if that is an error with the scenario or an error with my driving. I may have to accept that it may not be possible to complete as designed. But I'm going to give this a, another try here, and hopefully we're going to see a completion this time. I'm going to have to drive a little recklessly on this part of the journey, unfortunately. 
Salford Station is our next station. This station is not the problem. The problem is with the station after it, which is Horley Station. You have to literally make it in the station going super fast and screech to a halt. So that's literally what we're going to have to do if we want to be on time. And that's what I'm going to do. It's not a way I like to drive, but it's what they want us to do. Might even have to do that here at uh, Salford, Sal Salford's as well. So another little overhead view here. So I'm going a little faster than I would like at this point, so I'm gonna start slowing down now. This is not a speed I normally like to go, but as I said, I have to do this a little more breakneck pace just because of the way the scenario is designed. So I'm going to put a level 2 brake application on right now. I'm going to go ahead and take it off for a moment. I'm going to take the brakes off completely. And I'm going to go ahead and start reapplying them right now. So I can come to a quick stop. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to put on a level 3 brake application at 35. There it is. So this is a brake application I do not like using, but again, because of what I know is coming up, I have no choice. I have to do it. So we did pull off that stop, and I'm going to see if we can make our stop at Horley in a much better fashion. Let's look outside. Now, in my previous attempts at this scenario, that train passed while I was actually unloading passengers. I wish that we had a little more time on the next timing so I could actually watch that train go by on a video clip for you. So it's a bit of a shame that I'm not going to get to show you that part of the recording here. But we're getting, leaving uh, Horny Station. We're moving into a 90, per hour, 90 mile per hour speed zone. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I just did at Horley because obviously this game wants us to screech to a halt and make our passengers uncomfortable. To be on time. That's what we're gonna do. Do what the boss says. Attention passengers, please make sure you don't lose your lunch as we do this next stop. Thank you. see the station is still about a minute and a half away from us so this is this is gonna be dicey we can't slow down at all right now and we're not even up to speed so I don't I think this needed another minute added to it to make it doable or more easily doable so as I said I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to do this but let's uh, keep our speed going I'm gonna lower the speed starting at about I'll take the throttle off now a little bit I'm going to lower the speed starting about half a mile and we're going to screech to a halt. You're going to see me apply some very heavy brakes here. Okay, this is going to be good because I have to get down to 70 anyway, so I'll start dropping now. So I'm now down to 70. Gatwick Airport is very shortly after the station as well. As you can see, we're coming up on our arrival time very, very quickly, so there's nothing I can do about this. We are guaranteed to be late for this stop, even based on our previous arrival time. We're guaranteed to be late. So let's get in the station and come to a stop quickly. I did not mean to go to 100%. Let's get it back down to a level one application so we can get fully into the platform, hopefully. I want to be fully in the platform. I am fully in the platform. Let's come to a stop and get the doors open. Let's see if that does it. Arrival at Horley, platform two.
Okay. This time around, I did arrive on time, so I did manage to get the stop, as you see. But as you see, based on my previous station arrival time, that was an unrealistic stop. So I'm going to say that that is a fault in the snare, because the next stop is four minutes from now at Gatwick Airport. And as you see, it's within a mile. There's no way it takes us four minutes to get there. So I believe that was just a typo on the stop time, unfortunately. The scenario is still completable, but I believe that was a typo on the stop time. It should have been one minute later to be more realistic. So uh, I don't expect that DTG is going to want to go back and edit that, uh, but I'm going to basically prove right now that you could have put that stop one minute late and you would have been able to do it. I'm going to be proving that right now. So we're going to start slowing down immediately for Gatwick Airport. There's another service going by. Beautiful. Very, very busy day out here. Busy afternoon. So since we do have all the time on Earth, I am just going to coast in for this one. There is a plane going over. Look at that. You can always tell you're at Gatwick Airport when a plane goes over you. And that looks like it does a belly flop onto the runway. Game physics. Clearly they did trains, they didn't do planes. Always nice to see the airplanes though. And there are some people who play uh, the plane simulator as well, so this harkens back to the plane simulator players. So this is Gatwick Airport. And we have a little bit of time before we have to leave. We're going to be here for a while, so... Let's take a look outside once we open the doors. Arrival at Gatwick Airport. Gatwick Airport. We have a 70 mile per hour speed limit. We have about a two minute drive and about two and a half miles to go. This seems a little unrealistic so we're gonna have to punch this because we have to sit there for three minutes waiting for the uh, waiting for everything to be clear there for the boarding process to complete. So we're gonna get to a 90 mile per hour speed limit and hopefully we're gonna be able to make it to our final stop at Three Bridges on time. I'm not confident that we're gonna be able to do this one. But uh, I did uh, set up a save just in case I need to change my uh, setup for this. Hopefully I can do this one on the first try because this is our last stop. As you see, our arrival time is literally seven seconds before the minute changes. So we don't have a lot of time to be late here if we are late. So this is going to be a little bit worrying. So the closed Tinsley Green and Gatwick Airport station is along this area. I don't know if there's anything in the route that shows you that. Oh, we have to cut our speed before three bridges. This is going to be fantastic. We have a 60 and then a 40 and then a 30 to junction over to the side. So this is going to be uh, interesting. Get, get your seatbelts on, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to need them. We have a minute to make this stop as well. It looks like it's too far of a distance. So we got a warning for our double yellow signal there. I think this service does extend off to the other direction here. I'm going to start slowing down now because I need to uh, slam on the brakes. Thank you, I'm aware. In fact, I need to get down to 30 in a hurry, so I'm just going to drop now on a level 2 brake application. That's our junction signal. So 
So I'm going to get down to 40 in time. Now I have to get down to 30. Keep going. And I'm going to stay at 30 until I get into the platform. Then I'm just coming to a quick stop. That'll do. So yeah, you can't do it too much better than that. So if we're late on this, there's not much I'm going to be able to do. We can't do it much better than that. So let's hope that this will pass the scenario as we arrive at Three Bridges. This is our final stop, so we'll take a look outside as we uh, have our arrival processed. This is the end of our journey for this uh, scenario. Three Bridges Station uh, is... Uh, I know the other stations after this, we have Balcombe, we have um, others as well. We did successfully complete, so I didn't get a chance to go through that list. So we have successfully completed the task for the service. We are done. Whew. That last stop was a bit of a nail biter, but we did pull it off. And uh, there was another stop I thought at Horley that I didn't think was fair in this scenario. But other than that, this was not a bad scenario. I like the AI traffic in this scenario. So other than those uh, little... Uh, problems with the eight with um, a couple of the stops there or the one stop in particular that was a pretty good scenario we got all of our stops and because I had to um, restart once or twice you got to miss one or two speedings in practice I only sped once in the final uh, run of the scenario that you're gonna see so I hope you enjoyed that uh, particular uh, scenario for some reason I have two different three different EMU Southerns here I don't know why uh, but uh, in any case uh, don't worry about the numbers there because they uh, are not relevant. I ran multiple scenarios at once. I have one more scenario I still have to run, which is the final scenario in the careers pack. And that final scenario in the career pack, while I bring that up, make sure you like the video. If you like what you saw here today, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see when this comes out. And uh, as I get down, you saw that I passed some stars there. There are the stars I just passed. As you can see, five of them are marked. There's one here that is not marked. That's a Flying Scotsman scenario. I'm not doing the Flying Scotsman yet. That's a train I'm gonna come back and do once I start introducing steam engines. I wanna follow tutorials for steam engines, but I have a lot of diesel engines to look at in the meantime, and there's not as much steam content on steam, ironically, as there is other content, diesel and electric. So I'm trying to go through more of the diesel and electric first because they're a better way to start the game. In any case, uh, the next turn we are gonna do is going to be this one down here, which is the Southern Connection uh, career scenario. This is the final scenario in the career pack for this particular route. And it's the final scenario in the entire pack if you don't count the free roams. So uh, again, subscribe to the channel to see when this comes out if you are seeing this as, it, as I release it. And you'll then know when this channel is coming, when this uh, scenario comes out as well. In the meantime, I do want to thank you for joining me on this wonderful drive today. We have our last hour long scenario, four out of five difficulty on London to Brighton coming up next time on the Southern Connection from Hayward's Heath to London. And I will see you for that scenario. I'm Cyclo, make sure you join me for that. Uh, have a wonderful day, evening, or night, whatever it is for you at your part of the world, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>